fact, Mr. Speaker, I want to do a few things first. The first thing, of course, is recognize Corporal Cirillo. I know that was done today quite eloquently by the Premier, uh, the leader of the third party, and the leader of the official opposition. But also, I think it's important to recognize a few other individuals, Mr. Speaker. Um, the former Sergeant at Arms, Kevin Vickers, who was considered a hero that day. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge Constable Gervais, probably one of the most bravest things I've ever seen, Mr. Speaker. When the bullets were flying, he ran through the caucus doors, told us to get down, turned around, and held the doors. Wow. And a bullet lodged in that door. Um, he put his life on the line for us, and that is something that I know I am truly grateful for, and I know many MPs are always grateful for. And that parliamentary crew of security that day did an outstanding job, and I want to acknowledge them and thank, you, thank them for that. As well, I think it's important for us here to also thank our security staff who keep us safe each and every day, those folks that are out there keeping us safe, it's important as well. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Member of Parliament, uh, former Member of Parliament Ryan Cleary, who uh, he and I had a, a moment uh, where we both thought we were going to die and it was kind of an unusual experience and it's always something that um, he and I talk about. And of course, Mr. Speaker, I know my time is running, uh, running out, but our families, we need to thank our families because while many of us were, were taken out of harm's way when we couldn't reach out to let them know we were safe, our families as politicians um, are always worried um, about us and you know what, I think uh, we need to acknowledge that the families had a very difficult time that day as well and I'd just like to thank our families, all of our families for allowing us to do what we do. Thank you Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Further statements, the member from uh, Oxford. Thank you very much Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise and recognize Local Government Week. It's an opportunity to raise awareness about the role and importance of municipal governments. Across Ontario, municipalities are holding events and activities to raise awareness about how municipal government works, and particularly among students. Municipalities are holding council meetings in schools, offering tours of municipal offices, as well as, as holding essay contests and career fairs. I want to commend all the municipalities of Ontario, both for their efforts to raise awareness uh, this week and for the work that they do for the people of their communities every day. We know how important the services that local governments deliver are and they are and they do it with limited resources. Whether it's roads, water, waste disposal or assistance to people in need, municipalities provide services that people depend on every day. We understand that they are a mature level of government and that is working hard through planning and economic development to ensure a bright future for their communities. And municipalities can depend on us to be there for them. Many municipalities have told us that they need a real partner who is willing to listen to them. And we are committed to both listening and to working with them. We understand the challenges they face and that they are the experts on local government in their communities and we value their input. Again, as we celebrate Local Government Week, I'm pleased to commend all our municipal governments on behalf of the PC Caucus and recognize them for all their hard work. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Niagara Falls. Mr. Speaker, on Wednesday, October 14th, I was pleased to attend a grant announcement at the Degano Fruit Farms in Niagara Lake, where the Ontario Tender Fruit Growers and the Friends of the Green Bay Greenbelt Foundation announced $400,000 to support our local tender fruit growers and the Niagara region as a whole. These funds will be used to launch a pilot project to plant tender fruit tree varieties such as peaches and pears to provide a financial boost to the Greenbelt growers and strengthen this key economic sector. I'd like to applaud the Friends of the Greenbelt Foundation for their continued work in ensuring nearly 2 million acres of land is preserved. I'd also like to recognize the Ontario tender fruit growers the work they do to plays in a significant role in Ontario's economy. Mr. Speaker, Niagara Peninsula is, is Ontario's largest and most important fruit growing area and it's wonderful to see this pilot project being established in order to enhance this very significant part of Niagara's own local economy. Now we need to ensure that these wonderful locally grown tender fruits are being sold locally. I am going to be encouraging the grocery stores in my riding and across Ontario to give prime shelf space to locally grown fruits. Putting these locally grown fruits up front means people eat fresher, they're better tasting, and they're healthier, and we support our farmers across Ontario. 
by growing locally, selling locally, and eating locally, we will help strengthen not just Niagara's economy by creating more jobs, but the entire province economy. Thank you very much. Thank you. For the member service, the member from Cambridge. Thank you. I rise today to mark Community Health and Wellbeing Week that's being celebrated across Ontario. During this week, Ontario's 109 community health centres, community-governed family health teams and nurse practitioner-led clinics are holding special events across the province and are coordinated by the Association of Ontario Health Centres. This week's theme is Community Health and Wellbeing Shift the Conversation, creating a new kind of dialogue about health and health care that is all about addressing all of the factors in people's lives that affect their health and well-being. And one of those factors is the kind of community where you live. Research tells us that when you have the opportunity to live in a caring and connected community that makes you feel valued and accepted, makes you feel like you belong, then you are more likely to be healthy. This is why during this week, participating centres are raising awareness about community, vitality and sense of belonging as critically important determinants of health. The need to support this Support forms a key principle in the community health centre model to promote health and well-being. In my own riding of Cambridge, Lang's Community Health Centre established a great program called Connectivity. Working with local police, the goal was to mobilise health and social services organisations to address risk factors and reduce the incidence of crime. This program has been a wonderful success promoting community vitality that's now spread to Kitchener and Guelph. I thank all those who work in community health centres across Ontario and I'm proud to recognise the hard work they do and their focus on community vitality and building a sense of belonging. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This week is Small Business Week, and we get to pay tribute to the small businesses that form the bedrock of our Canadian economy. In Ontario, nearly 98% of businesses are small business, employing less than 100 people. This year, the Ontario Chamber of Commerce would like to help showcase the pivotal role that the Ontario Chamber Network plays in making Small Business Week one of the most anticipated celebrations. And I know throughout my areas of uh, Cortha Lakes, Halliburton, Durham, and Peterborough, seminars, open houses, and award ceremonies have taken place all week and will continue. So as we celebrate Small Business Week, it is important to recognize the challenges that they do face and what we can do to help them prosper. In a recent survey by the Ontario Chamber of Commerce, 44% of businesses said they would reduce, that they would reduce their payroll or hire fewer employees because of the ORPP. That's a big the government has yet to provide any assurance to businesses that the ORPP won't kill jobs and hurt competitiveness. The Ontario Chamber of Commerce has consistently raised alarm bells about how rising electricity prices will impact the health of our economy. The Liberal sale of Hydro One will affect small business owners. There are no assurances that Hydro rates won't skyrocket again because of the exorbitant salary severances and gold-plated pensions. The CFIB estimates that the burden of red tape costs Canadian businesses $30 billion each year in compliance alone. The government needs to listen to small businesses, get its fiscal house in order, and once again become the best place in the world to invest and to support small business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As the member for Davenport, I'm delighted to rise and congratulate Foodshare Toronto, a wonderful organization in my riding, on its 30th anniversary today. And it was with great pleasure that I attended their celebratory breakfast this morning. Foodshare is a non-for-profit organization that works with communities and schools to deliver healthy food and food education. Since 1985, Foodshare has pioneered innovative programs, impacted what kids eat in school, and improved the way people eat and grow food. I'm proud of the work Foodshare is doing to improve food security for children and families in